I'm sure most of us can relate to that feeling you get when looking back at old photos and videos of yourself in which the question, what was I thinking arises? In today's video, we're gonna look back at five of my worst grooming choices so you don't have to make the same mistakes. Before we get into it, here's a quick message from our sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped are all about preventing bad grooming choices for the modern man. They've recently released their nose and ear trimmer known as the Weed Whacker, which is cordless, waterproof, and designed with skin safe technology. It can feel unusual using an electric trimmer for nose hairs, but safety and skin safe technology is a driving force in the development of new Manscaped products. You can use the tool with confidence. Unlike other nose and ear trimmers, it features a contour design, making it a popular choice to effectively and efficiently trim these areas. I incorporated this tool into my routine several months ago and I haven't looked back. Manscaped are also partnered with Testicular Cancer Society to educate and bring awareness for the most common form of cancer amongst guys aged 15 to 35. Be sure to use code LUCA at checkout for 20 20% off your total order and free shipping. And if you're interested in checking out any other Manscaped grooming products, you can do so by following the link in the description. As the men's grooming industry continues to boom, it's becoming increasingly accepted for guys to groom features of themselves which were previously overlooked. Eyebrows are one of those things. Micro changes to the eyebrows can completely shift the way a face is perceived. You can compare these photos of JLo yourself in which she has thin and thick eyebrows and the impact it has on her overall face. Another example here shows the same set of eyes just with different brows. And again, you can see for yourselves how significant of an impact the differences in eyebrows have on the overall appearance. But though I don't intentionally invest too much effort into how my eyebrows look, I still feel like I've become a walking portfolio of bad brow choices. My biggest piece of advice would be less is more. We've established that even the smallest changes to your eyebrows can have a huge difference on your overall face. And so generally speaking, it's best to stick to how your brows are naturally shaped rather than attempting to entirely redefine them. I would avoid having them professionally done unless you're happy with a very clean cut and sharp looking eyebrow. This comes from personal experience. Probably five years ago now, I had no idea about brow grooming. Went and had them professionally done as recommended and I came out with very thin looking brows. And it was also only a few weeks ago that I noticed my brows becoming way too thin. So this is a mistake that constantly reoccurs if I don't keep a close eye on it. It goes without saying that your hairstyle or hair cut plays a significant role in your identity. Because of this, it can be incredibly difficult to switch up what we ask for when we visit our barbers. However, what this usually leads to is a term I'm going to token as a lack of personal appearance evolution. The name is a work in progress, but for the meantime, I'm going to use my brother-in-law as an example. For years, I was telling him to stop having his sides trimmed so short and high up and to grow out his hair on top just a little so that he could then style his hair in a way that would complement his face shape. He went from this sort of style to where he's at now. And in my opinion, he suits it a lot more. So I'm editing this video and I've realized I've not used the best example. A better example and the one I probably should have mentioned when I filmed this video is myself. Several years ago, I used to just maintain the disconnected undercut. I'd go to the barbers, sit in his chair, and he knew exactly what to do. It wasn't until I started experimenting with different hairstyles that I had the confidence to grow out my hair and just in general switch it up. And so I guess in plain English, the point I'm trying to make is it's never a bad idea to switch up what you ask for. A lot of us guys associate sun protection or SPF with hot weather, fierce sun or going on holiday. However, even on a day like today where it's cold, windy and even snowing, it's still important to apply SPF. A visual representation of sun damage is this photo of Bill McElliott. He was a truck driver for 28 years. During his time on the road, the left side of his face was exposed to the sun through his window, and as a result has become damaged and therefore aged drastically different to the right side of his face. As well as being cosmetically beneficial in the form of preventing premature aging or helping maintain an even skin complexion, it also dramatically lowers the risk of skin cancer, which is one of the leading forms of cancer in the US. My recommendation if you're just starting out of SPF is to find a morning moisturizer in which SPF has been formulated within it. I personally use the Morning Moisturizer by Geology. It has an SPF factor of 10, which in all honesty is the bare minimum you want to be applying. However, it is a good place to start. It makes the habit of applying an SPF daily easy and hassle-free. And once you've standardized that habit, then you can look to optimize and start layering SPF, maybe looking for specific SPFs for your skin type, and so on. If you were interested in checking Geology out, I'll be sure to link them in the description. This is fortunately one that is deeply embedded in the book of lessons, but I used to trim my beard in a pretty unusual and unnatural way. I would shave into my natural beard line, which not only required a lot of maintenance, 
but left behind a slightly chin strap style. The remedy of fixing this is by simply opting for a clean shave and allowing your natural beard line to come in. In regards to lining up the neckline, uh, this is something which is still a work in progress. I seem to change it up almost every year. And so on that note, if you would like to see how I line my beard, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And last but not least, using the wrong hair product. Although there is technically no right or wrong when it comes to hairstyling, I often see guys opt for products that don't favor the style they're going for. For example, I see a lot of guys use a hair gel for a pompadour, uh, which results in quite a strandy and crisp finish when traditionally pompadours are best achieved using a matte clay for that high volume and matte finish. I believe a combination of both experience and a very basic understanding of what different hair products do is the fix here. Trial and error of different hair products is going to give you the best understanding of what does what and what best works with your hair. Alternatively, you could just spend 10 to 15 minutes researching what each hair product does. That should give you a sufficient understanding in knowing what hair products are best suited towards your hair type and the style you want to achieve. But that brings this video to an end. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed, a thumbs up is greatly appreciated. It also lets me know you guys like seeing these types of videos. Subscribe if you haven't already. It's free to do and you can always change your mind later. Again, a massive thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care guys. Bye bye.